All right, Niner Nation, listen, I apologize for a lack of a show last week. I was on the road with the women's basketball team uh, up there in Toledo as part of the WNIT, but PFG is back this week, and for the for foreseeable future, we should be back every week until the end of the semester. we got a lot coming at you this week, including a slew of new headlines. We hit the road with the baseball team, head down to the castle as they take on the Knights, and of course, your weekend weather update and highlight of the week, Panning for Gold is back, and it starts right now. The beat is jam-packed, full of information this week as we talk the construction on floor two of the SAC. Shannon McCallum went to Indianapolis to take part in a WNBA combine. And of course, we update you on some Niners in the minors. All coming up on the beat. You're not going to want to miss it. It starts now. We got my main man, Kev Bo, back on the cue cards this week for the beat. It should go swimmingly. We start with a note about the women's basketball season. It ended uh, in Toledo in the semifinals of the WNIT last week, but senior Shannon McCallum's basketball career is far from over. This past week, Shannon took the trip to Indianapolis, the site of the women's basketball final four, to participate in the WNBA Pro Camp. Shannon tried out, went through some drills, and, and got some shots up in front of scouts. The WNBA draft is April 11th at 3 p.m., and uh, even if Shannon doesn't get drafted, is it, it is expected that she will at least get a, a camp invite or go overseas to play professionally. One thing is for sure, Shannon McCallum, one of the all-time greats in a 49er uniform, is, uh, is her basketball career far from over, and we'll be sure to keep a lookout on Shannon as she continues her career. If you've eaten in the food court recently of the sack, you've noticed some construction up on the second floor. You know, the site of the former game room where you would swing by and play games like Street Fighter or a little Madden or shoot some pool, something like that. Well, it will be the home for our first football staff. And of course, other administrative department members will be housed there. And no, we're just not putting them in a big open space. As you can tell from over my shoulder, they put up walls, they've made uh, little offices, and this thing has really come up fast. It should be finished by the end of the month. Uh, certainly exciting, and it should be a real nice first home for our 49er football staff. It's got a big conference room, uh, a big meeting space. I mean, it's gonna be really top notch and really sharp up there on the second floor uh, of the sack. 49ers golf team plays at home just once a season, and it's not even really at home. It's 15 minutes up the road in Kannapolis, but it's this weekend as they participate in the Irish Creek Collegiate. Say that five times fast. Irish Creek Collegiate. They won the whole thing a year ago, and we hope they can do it again this season. It's uh, this weekend, of course. Fans and spectators are welcome. You just kind of swing on up to the course, walk on for free, and uh, apply the golf clap. I've, I've never been to a to a golf event, so I don't know what a golf, I think it's like just a, a, a softer clap, but uh, you can apply that when necessary, maybe. And uh, listen, it, it should be a lot of fun. If you've got nothing going on, head up to the, the Irish Creek Collegiate in Kannapolis. The Masters Tournament is this weekend down in Augusta, so I'm kind of in full golf geekdom right now, and I'm excited to head out there Saturday with the camera, get some highlights. Hope the Niners can drive, chip, and putt their way to the uh, to the Collegiate Chris, Irish Creek Collegiate Crystal Jug that they get. It's kind of a cool little trophy uh, that they get. Anyway, moving forward with another headline, this past weekend Major League Baseball started their season, the opening day ceremonies, and for a baseball junkie like myself, it's pretty close to a national holiday. The minor league clubs start up this week and their season will get going as, as we speak, or as I speak, the Painting for Gold uh, research team is feverishly putting together a full list of where are they now? Uh, kind of former 49er baseball players now trying to navigate their way through the minors and get to the big leagues. The, the, the websites haven't necessarily updated their information yet. It's not the easiest stuff to come by, but guys like Rob Lyerly, who's in the, the New York Yankees farm system, Ryan Rivers, Spencer Steedley, Patrick Lawson, and many more guys um, navigating through the minors, minor leagues. 
Again, sometimes this info isn't easy to come by, but we have some people in the know and uh, PFG is expected to get all that information next week for you. It will be a headline in the beat and we can follow those guys all summer long uh, in their respective clubs. One final note. Be sure to give Panning for Gold a follow on Twitter. It's twitter.com backslash Panning for Gold 2. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And be sure to follow or become a fan of the official Charlotte 49ers Facebook fan page. We upload all of our video content, news clippings, uh, headlines, all that stuff, and much, much more right to our Facebook page. If you like us or you've uh, become a fan of us, you automatically get uh, updated in your little news feed because I know you all log on to Facebook at least 30 times a day. Uh, so be sure to follow the 49ers on Facebook or I will send Norm after you with a foam pickaxe. And trust me, when he hits you with that thing, it really, really hurts. It does. That's going to do it for headlines this week. We're going to roll into everybody's or at least the crew's favorite portion of the show. They call it the highlight of the week. And it starts right now. Cue that beautiful athletic accomplishment. This week's highlight of the week comes from the Sunday afternoon game against Xavier in a tie game. Tony Montabano steps to the plate. That one's up the middle and that's through for a base hit. And the runner is going to come across the score in Gillespie and Montabano now pulling in the third slide in. That one's going to get in the dugout. And he's going to get home on the throwing error. Like a pretty unassuming play, but you see him pointing to his mouth as he crosses home. I've confirmed from numerous sources on the team, he was eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at the plate. That's right. You can't make this stuff up. Tony Montabano scores with peanut butter and jelly in his mouth. The official Panic World meteorologist is in the building and he's going to give us our weekend weather update even though there's really no athletic events at home this weekend. It's supposed to be beautiful in the Queen City. Garrett has got our weekend weather update. Take it away, Garrett. Thanks, AJ. Garrett Beatonwall here with your weekend weather update. Yeah, beautiful weekend here in the Queen City as you can see on Friday here on our map. We'll have mostly sunny conditions with high temperatures reaching the upper 70s, maybe even uh, passing the 80 degree mark. We could see that here in the Charlotte metro region. For Saturday, mostly sunny skies, maybe a few clouds there for you, but abnormally uh, high temperatures. We'll have high temperatures around the 85 degree mark. Same basic story for Sunday, maybe about a 10 to 30 percent chance of rain there for you Sunday, but not looking too bad here in the Queen City all weekend long. That's a check of your weekend weather update. I'm Garrett Beatonball. Now back to you, AJ. Nice to see Garrett is trying to cop off of my style with that nice little tweed corduroy jacket. Not pulling it off like the kid can pull it off. I'll tell you that right now. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we uh, went down to Knights Castle with a little game day documentary as the Niners took on the Knights in a fun exhibition game. You're not going to want to miss that. Penny for gold. Coming up around the bend. Don't go anywhere.
Same day. Got it. Castle on the outside for four strikes. He goes down on strikes. Low two. Swing and miss. Got him. Swinging. Strike through a count of three on the play. Second strikeout for the 49ers. Shaler sends one to left. That is going to get down in from the warning track. Go around first. Head for second. And the little man has a stand up double. Finally, do the stand bit. Full strike three. The Dawkins and Pope is finally out of trouble. Now, and towards third, Mason charges, has to hurry. Nice play. The pitch swung on live drive to the left field of Ben Set. And the pitch runners break, and the pitch is off the glove of the Knights catching Tyler Flowers, so no play. Everybody is safe. It'll be a double scoop. Niner Nation, uh, my name is Brian Hamilton, pitcher for the Charlotte 49ers. I'm going to go through some of my pitches and uh, hopefully you guys can learn a little bit uh, on how I throw the ball. Uh, the first pitch I start with is a four seam fastball. Um, throw it, you grip it with your seams going this way. They call it four seams because when the hitter sees it, they see this type of action. Um, that's the fastball I'm going to throw most of the time. It's usually, you can throw it a little bit harder. It's also a straighter fastball. Um, the next fastball is a two-seam fastball, which you grip this way. Uh, they call it a two-seam fastball because when it's coming in, you see these, these two seams coming at you. Um, the type of action you'll get with a two-seam fastball is you, when you throw it, it's more, it'll run arm side, so it almost has a little bit of uh, sinking action to it, and usually pitchers won't throw this as hard as a four-seam fastball, but it'll give a little bit more movement and deception. Um, the next pitch I throw is a changeup. I throw my changeup this way, and I almost throw it as if it's a four-seam fastball, except I throw with these two fingers right here. So you're gonna wanna grip it around the four seams like this. Um, the purpose of a changeup is to throw it almost as if you're, as if it's a fastball, and you want the hitter to think it's a fastball the whole way. So you're gonna wanna throw this pitch, say you got a hitter that's on time for your fastball, mix in a change up and it's really gonna really gonna help you by giving them that other look. Um, the final pitch that I throw is a curveball. Uh, there's multiple ways to throw a curveball. Um, I like to throw my curveball with my middle finger on the seam and then my other finger slightly with slight pressure on the outside of the, of the seam. You're gonna throw it, this is a little different than a fastball on the change up in the way you throw it. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna start throwing it like a fastball to begin with. Then you're gonna rotate your fingers over top and kind of snap through the ball to get that curveball action. Uh, this is another good pitch that if somebody is hitting your fastball pretty well or is on time for a fastball, you can mix this in there. It's also a good way to get a hitter to swing at a pitch outside the strike zone. <laughs> Where I learned my windup, um, I'll be honest, uh, just kind of experimenting. I've messed around with a couple different things and you know Coach Hall and I have worked on some things and I just started playing around with the way I throw and felt right so that's how that's how we adopted it. <laughs> 